Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com, and in this video, we are going to answer the question, should I keep a small balance on my credit cards if I want to build credit? Sort of a credit utilization 101 video here. If you are someone that is a regular subscriber to this channel, good chance you already know the answer. But we get this question over and over again in the comments section of our videos, and so we are going to tackle it again, and maybe I will do the best job I have ever done of explaining how the whole process works. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. And if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So when this question is asked, should I leave a small balance on my credit cards in order to build credit? It is a question that is sort of vague, especially once you understand how the process really works. So sometimes people give advice that you should leave a small balance on your credit cards and somebody else hears that advice and they sort of take it to mean something that it doesn't mean, or maybe the first person didn't even know what it meant and they told the second person and sound really nobody knew what it meant. And so we're gonna break it down a little more clearly here. So the main message of this video is you don't ever need to pay interest in order to increase your credit score. So the idea of keeping a small balance on your credit cards, revolving it month to month, and paying interest on it, there's no reason to do it. That is really just you paying extra money to accomplish something that you could just as easily accomplish without paying any extra interest. So don't ever pay interest on your credit cards. When you get your credit card bill and it has a due date, whether that's by mail or that is online in whatever form you get it, email or whatever, you go and you pay off that full balance by the due date and you will be able to build credit and you may even get some rewards if your credit card has it and you won't have to pay anything. Okay, so don't pay interest if you have the ability to pay your credit card bill in full. And just as an aside, if you don't have the ability to pay your credit card bill in full when it comes due, well, then you're probably putting too much on your credit card. But that's another topic. All right, now with that said, why is this idea even out there? Why do people think they should carry a small credit card balance in order to build their credit? Well, there is a small kernel of truth here, but it's a little off the mark. And so when it gets communicated from person to person, they believe that they need to carry a balance from month to month and pay some interest on that balance in order to satisfy the credit card companies and then they will get some extra points on their credit score. In reality, you're not gonna get anything extra from the credit card companies for carrying a balance from month to month and paying interest. They might like it if you pay interest because they're going to make more money, but the reason that you hear you should carry a balance from month to month is because it makes sense for you to carry a balance during the month during the billing cycle of a credit card in order to show that you are using that credit card and then pay off that balance when the credit card bill is due. From the perspective of credit card companies and other lenders, what they really want to see from you is how you can handle credit. If you are given credit, will you use it? And when you use it, will you make your payments and will you not get yourself into too much trouble? So if a credit card company gives you a credit line, are you gonna use that complete credit line immediately or are you going to use a small part of that credit line and then pay that off? They will reward you for not using too much and for making your payments as you have agreed to do. If they give you a credit line and you use it all and then you don't make your payments on time, that's when you get yourself into trouble. So when we talk about keeping a balance on a card, that is a way for the credit card companies to see, yes, this person used that credit card, yes, they're making their payments on time. If we couldn't see that there was a balance on the credit card at some point, well then as far as the credit card companies are concerned, you got the credit card and just put it in a drawer and that's not what they want and that's not what helps you build your credit score. As a quick example, if I got a new credit card, let's say I never had credit before, I got a new credit card and they gave me a $1,000 credit line, I could go all the way up to $1,000 in purchases before I had to make any payments on that credit card. So I get this new $1,000 credit card and I go out and I spend 100 bucks or 200 bucks on that credit card. Then the bill comes due. I don't pay that $100 or $200 right away, right? Because I don't have to. I don't have to pay for a while yet. So then the bill comes due and the due date is still not for, you know, maybe two weeks after they actually send me something at home or I get something online if that's how I pay my bills. So I had a balance during the month, that $100 or $200 that I spent. I get the bill. I pay it off in full. 
they could see that I used the card and then they could also see that I made the payment and that is good for your credit score. No reason to keep any of that $100 or $200 that you spent on the credit card and have it revolve and pay interest on it. You can pay it off and you don't have to worry about it when it comes to your credit score. All right, so that's the simplest explanation and it's enough for many people. You use your credit card, you pay it off in full, it will help you build credit. You don't need to carry anything from month to month. Now, for many people who want to build their credit even faster, they wanna make sure they maximize every point in their credit score, there is more to know and more to understand. All right, now the reason you can pay off that credit card balance in full and not worry about it and it will still help you build your credit score is because of the fact that the credit card companies are going to report your balances to the major credit reporting agencies before they bill you, before your bill is due. So Capital One, for example, let's say we had that $1,000 uh, credit limit card that we were talking about and you spent 100 bucks on that card. Capital One is going to go to TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, the major credit reporting agencies, and they're gonna give them that information. Here's the person, here's how much the credit line was, here's how much of that credit line they used, and then they're going to send you the bill afterwards. So you can pay off that whole bill and not worry about it because the credit reporting agencies already know what your balance was and that shows that you used the card during the month. So you can pay it off in full with complete confidence that it's not gonna hurt you. All right, so most of what we're talking about here boils down to credit utilization, an important factor in your credit score. Credit utilization is the amount of your credit that you are using versus the amount of your credit that you could be using. So that same credit card example we've been talking about, if you had a $1,000 limit on your credit card and you made purchases of $100 with that credit card, you are using 10% of the available credit that you have. So that's your credit utilization ratio, 10% on that card. 10% is a great target to try to hit and stay under with your credit card. That is sort of the ideal. Oftentimes though, 30% is used as a standard. And if you have a very low credit line, you know, say you only have a thousand dollars it may be difficult for you to stay under a hundred dollars but maybe you could stay under three hundred dollars and that will still be decent and it won't look like you're using a ton of your credit so if somebody tells you it has to be ten percent that is not true but probably thirty percent is a good mark for you to try not to go over but again, whatever percentage you are using of your credit card is going to be reported to the credit reporting agencies before they send you the bill when you get the bill you can pay it in full all right, so I told you 30% utilization is good, under 10% is ideal, but what if it's not very easy to stay under those numbers? What if you only have one credit card with a $1,000 limit and you know you're going to have to spend you know, 500, 600 bucks on that credit card? And what if you, having listened to what I just said, know that what's going to happen is that's going to get reported to the credit reporting bureaus and it's going to look like you have 50% or 60% utilization on that $1,000 credit card and that's not necessarily necessarily so good for your credit score, what do you do? Well, you do have the option to make multiple payments on your credit card in order to keep that utilization low even during the month so that when it is reported to the credit reporting agencies, it will show up as being under 30% or under 10%. So let's say you bought 500 bucks worth of stuff on your $1,000 credit card and you didn't like the fact that it would be 50% utilization, you could make a payment of $400 on that $500 purchase, get yourself down to a $100 balance, and then when it reported to the credit reporting agencies, it would only show you as 10% utilization on that card. And then, once it had already been reported to the agencies and you got your bill, you could pay off that other $100 in full, and then you wouldn't pay interest, but you would have shown that balance on your card to the credit reporting agencies, and you would be building your credit without ever paying interest. All right, and then there's one final scenario, one last question, I guess, to answer in order to bring this full circle. And that is the idea that if it is good to keep your credit utilization low, why isn't it good to keep your credit utilization at zero at all times? Sometimes people think that in order to build their credit, what they really should do is every time they make a purchase on their credit card, they should immediately pay off the credit card so it always has a zero balance and it is always going to show a 0% utilization. And in theory, that makes some sense. But in reality, 
what happens is that zero dollar balance is what gets reported to the credit reporting agencies. And so when another lender comes to look at your credit score or what your history is, all they see is that you got a credit card and that you never used it because it appears that you didn't use it because there's never a balance shown on the credit reports. So in reality, what you do want to do is have a balance sit during the month and not pay it off in full during that month, but keep it very low in order to show something, show that you are using the credit. Credit card companies, other lenders, they wanna know what your history is with credit. And if they, you give the impression that you get credit, but then you never use it, well, then they don't know how you can handle that credit. They don't know if you can manage it or if you're just getting credit cards on a whim and then you just put them in a drawer. So they want to know if they give you credit that you are going to be able to make the payments. If you buy something, you are going to pay it off. And if you have a history of buying things on credit cards and then paying them off, well, that shows that you know how to handle the credit. If you have a history of getting credit cards, never using them, that doesn't show them anything. And so that's not going to build your credit score and that's not going to make you look like a good potential customer for new lenders down the road. Now, I know that seems a little screwy, but you have to remember that your credit history and your credit score is not some personal moral judgment of you. It's simply a track record of what you have done so that a new lender can guess what you're going to do based on that past behavior. So you could think of it as someone comes to you and asks you to lend them $50. If you know that they have got $50 before from three different people that you know and they've always paid back that $50, well then you're likely to say yes because you figure they're going to pay you back. If they got $50 from three people in the past and they didn't pay those people back, you're gonna say, no, I'm not giving you $50. You never pay anyone back. But if someone came to you and asked you for $50 and said they would pay you back and you had no idea what their history was, you had no idea if they'd ever borrowed 50 bucks from someone before and whether they had paid them back or not, well then you're completely in the dark and so you're probably going to be a little more skeptical. So if there is a track record, then you kind of know, yes or no, what you think the likelihood is. If there's no track record, then you don't know. And so that's sort of how a credit history works. When things get reported, when you can see an actual credit history, well then you can make an educated guess on what the future will be. When you see a zero balance on someone's credit report over and over and over again, you don't know if they use the credit card or not. So you just have to assume that you're flying blind and you don't know what to do as a lender going forward. So that is the reason why it makes some sense to have those balances reported, to keep them low, to show that you can handle credit. So a new lender says, okay, I can see what this person has done in the past. They are a good bet for the future. So that's it. If you want to build credit with your credit cards, make some purchases, but keep it as a small amount in relation to the available credit that you have. Let them report to the credit reporting agencies and then pay it all off when the bill comes due. No need to revolve a balance from month to month. No need to pay any interest. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews. We talk personal finance, we talk deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thanks for watching. Bye.